everybody. A very happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there. Um, thank you for joining us for our first ever um, virtual Mother's Day celebration. We're so happy that we can at least make this happen um, and bring our farm to you today um, virtually. So I am going to wait a few seconds as always um, because of the lag and get a few viewers here before we officially get started. My name is Carrie. I'm the communications director here at the farm if you have not met me yet. Um, and as we continue to get people to join us, I'm just going to keep saying a very happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there. Um, we're really excited to still be able to celebrate this day with you virtually um, from afar. And we were realizing today that this is actually um, really special because a lot of you that follow us don't live here and so this will be your first ever chance to join us for Mother's Day so we're really excited to be able to offer that so just a few more seconds before I turn it over welcome happy Mother's Day hi Becky <laughs> happy Mother's Day to you uh, it's a beautiful day here in Palmer we could not have asked for better weather of course <laughs> since it's just us this year all right, I think I'm gonna turn it over again. Welcome, my name is Carrie. I'm the communications director here at the farm. Welcome to our first ever virtual Mother's Day. This is just the first of three live sessions that we'll be doing today. So the first one right now, um, our second one will be at 1 p.m. Alaska time and the last one will end the day at 4 p.m. with another live session so you guys can get your baby fix in all day. Um, and then in between these live sessions, we are gonna have different videos that have been scheduled throughout the day that you guys should check out. We've got some interviews um, that are really lovely um, talking to a few people that are really important to us and mean a lot to us here on the farm and just talking about the history of this special event and what the farm means to them. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our executive director, Mark Austin, and our education director, Danny Bierstecker. Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day from the Muskox Farm in Palmer. Yeah, the weather, like you said, Carrie, this is crazy. We watch the weather every single year, hoping for that not rainy, not windy, not break up, not muddy. And today it's going to be 70 some degrees. So anyway, we're going to try to bring all that to you guys from our beautiful little farm here in Palmer. Tons of Mother's Day love from our mommies right behind us over here to you guys. Um, super excited in this day and age where with all the craziness of everything, at least we're able to still come to you and bring you this. Um, despite this would have been our 32nd annual Mother's Day open house event and sad as we are that we're not open today and um, we're just we're thrilled that we can at least make an attempt to still bring you this really special event that has been building for decades really. We've had moms that grew up coming with their moms who are now bringing their children and so this this third generational event will we'll have a little blip this year but we're also super excited about next year bringing everyone back up and, and jumping back in with um, with a vengeance. So happy Mother's Day and uh, welcome to the farm. Please, as always, love your questions, anything that we can share with you about the farm and Mother's Day and what we're up to here is always welcome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us um, today for Mother's Day. It is wonderful to be able to have you guys out here, even if it's just virtually. So with that, let's get you guys a, a look at these little babies because really that's what you're here for. It is in our faces, which we totally respect. What do we got over here? <laughs> you want to take a look? All right, so we have Jadeite here, and her calf is Yord, which I'm hopefully saying right. That was so, perfect, Danny. Yes. <laughs> Yord. Yord, are you going to like take a look at us? Hi. <laughs> so we thought we'd start off while we wait for if any of you guys have questions, let us know. But the cool thing about you guys helping us choose Norris goddesses as our theme this year means we've gotten to learn a lot about Norris goddesses, which has been a lot of fun. So as you can see, I'm saying goddess only. So we ended up with three little girls, which while we would have loved to have some boys on the farm, um, we're going to continue with the girls rule around here. And so the one looking at you is little Yord. So she's calf number two that was born. Part of her name was chosen because Jadeite is her mama, and so we were pretty excited to go with two J's um, to have that. And so she's actually a pretty special goddess, we think. So she's actually a giant as far as goddesses go, and she personifies the wild earth, which we pretty much think is a great way to look at muskox out here is as Yord does. Um, so for an idea how you spell it, it's J-O-R-D. So it's a pretty simple one, even though it's a little hard for us to say. 
And of course our other two mamas are now hanging out right in front of their littles. <laughs> yeah. So you can kind of see Galena, she's the one kind of staring at you. And behind her is her calf, and that's Snow Trout, which might be the hardest one we've realized to say. Oh, there she is peeking her little Hello. head out. Hello. So Snow Trout means wisdom, courtesy, and self-control, which we're hoping she will channel. Um, if there was no muskox has ever done that yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep, and there's always a moment for self-control, so we'll see if she manages that. But otherwise, it'd be nice to have some more wisdom around here. And so she was um, calf two born. And then of course, we've all been watching Freya, who's now hiding behind her mama, Avalanche, over there. And Freya is probably the most famous of goddesses, or it seems that way to us. And so she means love and fertility, uh, which is pretty exciting. So we hope she can channel that one with the rest of the cats. She's definitely so far the most curious. And part of that is that she was born a week before the other two. Uh, so that helps her out a little bit, but she's much more bold and she's running around all over the place now trying to figure out and make the others kind of go along with her antics which has been pretty fun to watch out here can get a little closer yeah let's see if we can get a little closer to these guys oh hey hi snow truck let mama have her moment <laughs> So our moms are all very unique as well as their calves. And one of the things we always have to consider with moms is we probably have mom, lots of moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles who can relate that when you have a brand new little baby, you're way more protective of them, which is completely natural. And so we look for moms that are gonna be comfortable around us, but they do like to remind us, as you saw, Galena kind of ran a little bit towards us and that's completely natural. She's just reminding us she's in charge of her calf. Um, Galena is a pro mom for us. So this is actually calf number five that she's given us, which is pretty exciting. These guys are all pretty curious. So our farm truck is just out of view on the left side. <laughs> That's Josh. Hi, Josh. <laughs> so Josh's job is, of course, Sundays are his day to kind of make sure nothing gets out of the way in the farm and make sure all of our muskox are behaving themselves. But what? Okay. <laughs> Bye, Josh. Bye, Josh. Action, action photos. Yeah. yeah. Farm in action, everyone. It's riveting. <laughs> riveting stuff we're bringing you here. There he goes. Oh, a few little runs. Babies are off. But one of our muskox's favorite things is the truck is usually what brings food. And so because of that, we're always very, very curious of what the truck is doing. You want to follow it and see what it's up to because you never know what it might bring you. <laughs> Do we have any questions as you guys are starting to tune in and we're talking to you guys about all these littles? Hey, tell us what you're up to on Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. everyone can share what they're doing right now on Mother's Day. We want to hear what you're doing. Um, I do have a question about Amethyst. Um, and is she doing okay today? It's a great question. Thank you guys so much for um, all of your well wishes for Amethyst and for all of us out here. It is always a hard day when we lose a calf. It very rarely happens. Um, and we've appreciated all of your support. Amethyst is doing super well. She is kind of getting some time to mourn before she'll go back in with all of her friends, um, but she's doing super well. Thank you guys so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. It really helped us get through it as well. Yeah. Um, I don't have any questions yet, so we can just keep, yeah. see if we can get a little closer to these guys. Let's see if we can get the baby a little closer. Cam. Yeah. <laughs> We're with you on the baby cam thing. They're pretty cute. <laughs> I'm sure you love hearing us blabber on for hours <laughs> as well. <laughs> what do you think, Jadeite? So hiding behind Jadeite here is little Yord. Let's see if she'll give us hi, Galena. And here comes Galena again to tell us what's up. <laughs> it's not her leading the charge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So these little fluffs are growing rapidly. It's crazy. They've been on the ground for, what is it, a little over a week no. to two weeks. And it seems like they are so much larger than they were two weeks ago, which is always awesome. On Friday, you guys were not here, but there was a super scamper going on. All three of them were tearing up in the zoomies. And of course, no chance to get video. Yeah, because they knew nobody was here. Yeah. <laughs> 
So now these guys are going the other way of because course. they yeah. have to follow the truck. And the truck went around to try to figure out what was going on. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just keep following the babies to try to bring them to you guys. <laughs> They can't fully cooperate with us because that would not be a natural Mother's Day. No. And we could see him whenever we wanted. Hi, Mama. There we go. So this is Jadeite and Yord. <laughs> so again, Yord is the giantess goddess who personifies the wild earth, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> Couldn't possibly be better for a little muskox. So. No. So Jada here is a first time mommy. Um, so your dad is um, Larch, or sorry, is Basil. So Basil has been a pro dad for us before. So it's not his first calf. And Jada is actually pretty special. So we've mentioned Galena, who's also a mom behind her. And Galena is actually Jadeite's mom. So Galena got to become a mom herself and a grandma in the same day, which is pretty exciting. So um, Galena's calf is, um, was bred and the, his dad, her dad is Larch. Um, so they have two different dads, but um, Galena got to be a grandma, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, there's three generations in here. Yeah, <laughs> a lot like our first video. So if you've been following videos from today, our first video we released this morning was of our interpretive guide, Gate Grayson, and her mom. And there are three generations who've been coming out to the farm for Mother's Day. So um, it's kind of fitting with these guys as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have somebody asking how many musk oxen we have here. That's a great question. We have 80, 83. I know, 83. <laughs> you gotta get used to the new number I every know. year. <laughs> so 83 musk ox, which is pretty exciting. It's a, a very good number for us. We don't really want to get much bigger than that. Um, so which is why we don't have a ton of calves out here. So we only breed what we feel like we can take care of in any given year. And so we just have the three this year, which is a nice number. Kind of interesting too, probably the, the biggest age span we've ever had on the farm too, from one week old to 26 years old for Georgian yeah. now. So Georgian getting up there amongst the, we used to think the oldest musk oxen we'd ever heard of was 23, but Georgian's rewriting the rule book on that one. Yeah, I guess I didn't think of that until you just said that, just how, what a big span there is now, the age. <laughs> We got Freya in the background who looks like she's gonna go try to be bold by herself. So one of the things our muskox calves learn very quickly is like how far away you can get from mom. And the longer they're on the ground and hanging out, the, the more they'll kind of step away from mom to go play with the others. And so this last week has kind of been really fun to watch them start to, to venture away from mom and with each other. And each mom kind of deals with that a little differently. Galena, as you can see walking over, is definitely a little bit more of a hoverer with them where Jadeite and Avalanche are kind of like, meh, I got food. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> so it's always fun to watch the personalities of the cows, but also to watch our mamas. So as moms, they act very differently sometimes than they did as their own independent selves. So it's kind of fun to watch them change as they become moms. <laughs> and a big yawn. Yeah. <laughs> They don't know it's Mother's Day today, you guys, because nobody's here. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're just finding out. Um, I've got a question from Timbra. When do you separate the moms and the babies? It's a great question. So they will stay with mom until August. So that's about three months. And the weaning process is pretty slow. So these guys are starting to mimic mom eating solid food and they might start eating solid food here shortly for us. And so mom will wean them a little bit naturally. She'll start pushing them away from milk as they're growing and so when we bring these guys into the barn eventually our herd manager jamie will start kind of keeping time where calf is in the barn and mom isn't and that will grow so by the time august hits when we separate um they've had some time to adjust to what that looks like and it is a soft separation so moms will actually end up on the other side of the fence from them so it's a day where everyone has to adjust but it allows these little calves to learn how to be a muskox on their own and they learned it all from mom first so it lowers the stress level and makes them turn into wonderful adult muskox someday Ooh, you're gonna love this question, yeah. Danny. Um, 
from Stephanie. She says, wow, so awesome. Wishing I was there. We wish you could be here too, Stephanie. Um, is there such a thing as muskox cheese? Ooh, that's a great <laughs> question, Stephanie. Um, so while we do have lots of cheese lovers on the muskox farm, <laughs> we haven't made cheese out of their milk yet. So yes, muskox are obviously producing milk for these calves. And yes, technically you can milk them. So in years prior, after we've weaned, we have milked our mama muskox, or at least tried to get a little bit of milk that we would save in the freezer in case we had a calf not accepted. It gave you a little bit of milk to be able to give them to start off with the following year. And traditionally we never need it. So we'll thaw it out and make it into things like fudge or ice cream, but we've never really had enough for for cheese. Um, muskox moms have really tiny little teats and so it's pretty hard to get milk off of it. Even when you watch them nurse, you're like, oh, that must be difficult to get through all the hair and to find the teats under there. Um, and they just don't produce a lot because these guys are an Arctic creature. They're meant to live where there actually isn't a whole lot of water. So they're super efficient with their water and not a lot of it will make it into the milk. But as far as like what milk tastes like from a muskox, I've been told it tastes very goaty. As a fudge, it tastes pretty good. <laughs> we had one year when I was making some fudge and I did pasteurize it. And when it was warm, it did have a little bit of a goaty taste to it, but the ice cream was amazing and delicious and so was the fudge. When we made the ice cream, it was just nothing but muskox milk. Usually if you've ever made ice cream, you know, you put a lot of heavy cream in, you put some half and half. And with the muskox milk, we just pure muskox milk and it was phenomenal super rich great question now i just want some cheese thank you tamra she says loved your video on the harvesting of the kivute um yeah for those of you um who didn't catch it um we've been doing this really cool series that we've been really excited to bring to you called From Combing to Closet. Um, and we have already released episode one, which was all about herding our animals into the barn. And then episode two was just released on Friday. Um, it's all about combing. So we encourage you to check that out. It's on our Facebook page. It's on our YouTube channel, um, as well as Instagram. Hey, Galena. This was Galena again. <laughs> Making sure we remember. Making sure, yep. <laughs> We've got the two, the two little fluffer butts are by their toys over here. So maybe we could talk about that yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So while muskox generally are pretty lazy creatures, it's inherent to who they are is the idea that the less you move, the less you need to eat. They do still like to play sometimes. So every pasture, whether you're a little calf or an adult, has toys in it for them. So enrichment, essentially. So this pasture has tires in it um, so they can headbutt it and scratch on it. And then they do have their own little buoy out there so that they can headbutt that. Um, and then you'll notice that it does have a little bit of a divot. So they love playing in that divot and then laying in it because it's very cool compared to everywhere else with the shadow, uh, which is always fun. <laughs> And so it's fun to watch these guys play. They always seem to stop whenever we come out to get a video for you guys. Um, so we're sorry about that. Someday we'll get it on video for you. <laughs> but um, I do have a question from Gabrielle. She was wondering what happened with the last calf that we were expecting. Yeah. So unfortunately, do you want to So Amethyst was um, our last mom that we were keeping an eye on. And super sadly, on Thursday evening, um, the little calf did not make it through the birth process. It's um, something that's kind of a, oh, it's just, it's so rare around here that that would happen. And it's just heartbreaking to see it, to see a calf come to term, but not be successful. You know, these, these mammals, all of us, you know, we're complicated critters from blood cells to brain cells and joints and digestion there's so much that has to go right and doesn't take much to go wrong so um, we're not certain what might have happened with the calf amethyst is doing great um, we're mostly just grateful that it's an incredibly rare experience here on the farm but um yeah very sad to to see that not come to fruition that was a very hard one for all of us <clears throat> Should go see, get one more angle, yes. babe. So we'll go get one more quick look at these little calves before we sign off for now. Um, so if you do have any last questions for us, feel free to send them our way. <laughs> She's going exploring. Right, it's explore time. <laughs> She's like, I see other other creatures over there in these other pastures. <laughs> are they like, whoa, whoa. Are they muskoxen? <laughs> 
What do you think, Snowtra? <laughs> oh, I know, Mama. We're almost done. <laughs> Oh, we get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a question from Becky. Yeah. What kind of toys do the calves like? Yeah, so it really depends. I mean, just like people or other animals or dogs, they have their favorite toys. So we're still developing for these guys what it might be. Um, our yearling Gouda loves soccer balls. So she is the queen of playing with soccer balls. Um, these guys, they do have a ball out there and they do have the buoy and the tire. So they get a little bit of everything to kind of move around. Um, but they're just starting to really explore and realize what's in their pasture. So right now they seem more focused on the zoomies. They're running around chasing each other. We were watching them headbutt the other day which was always fun to watch um, and so they're more interested in each other than their environment yet but over the next couple of weeks they get more and more curious and start to explore what's all around them and we'll see what these guys all end up liking as their favorite toy which will be fun um, we've got a few more questions coming yeah. through probably because of the legs oh, so yeah. we'll definitely get these answered for you guys um, we have another question from Teresa how much water do they drink oh yeah these guys have a 44 gallon water tank in each of their pastures. Um, it really probably the biggest determinant of what they're drinking is how warm it is. So when we saw Josh earlier, he was filling up water and making sure that everyone had everything they needed for the day. And on a day like this with a group of moms, just a few of them, it'll be fine. If we need to clean it, we will. But um, we, on a group of like larger animals, like a group of eight to 10 animals in the summertime, we're filling them twice a day. So I guess that comes down to about eight gallons a piece per animal, <laughs> depending on the animal. But if it gets warm, they'll drink a lot of water. Great question. I've got another question from Jim. What determines how we keep these guys separated in their different, in their different pens here on the farm? That's a super good question. Mm -hmm. um, so on the farm, <laughs> Who wants it? Um, so in the wild, the animals would sort themselves out with their hierarchy. And that might mean that some younger animals, some young bachelors would get driven off. What we do on the farm is because there is a hierarchy, we will, knowing the personalities of everyone on the farm, we'll put them into groups of kind of the most um, like order of dominant of, of being um, just their hierarchy. So they're separated by sex. Of course, we wanna be entirely in charge of a breeding and no surprises there. There are times when we will put a steer in with a group of cows because it's a good fit the dynamics of how everyone works out and their competition for food and for water but um so we just try to get personalities matched as best we can we've got of course all the all the bulls get to hang with all the bulls we've got a group of of old guys who are kind of over it now and they don't have as much to prove and we've got a you know spunky group of you know, kind of the teenage um, cows that are out there. So it's all on personality. And if there's ever an animal that is really gets out of whack with um, not having the ability to stand up in the pecking order, then they can easily get adjusted into another group and we can have them um, just find a, a convenient group that works really well for their personality. <laughs> Um, I've got another question here from Gabrielle. What are the balls made of that she's seen them play with? Mark. <laughs> <laughs> There's a number of them. A lot of these have uh, kind of originated in like the fishing world. They're super, super sturdy. Um, and they can, they can take a musk ox, you sort of blow. Some of them are a hard plastic and they're like a fishing float. And others are more of a buoy that would either be a float or a fender for um, a boat if it came up to a dock. They're, um, yeah, the most important thing is durability. Although, like Danny said, Gouda loves her soccer ball. That's a run-of-the-mill soccer ball. Um, we've had basketballs out there, but they can they can beat up a lot of stuff. There's a few balls that have been around the farm for, boy, decades that came out of the oil industry. They were, they're called pigs. They would run them down the pipeline to scour out the um, heavy grease that would accumulate and also just keep the pipeline clean. Those, of course, would be cleaned and once they were retired. And they're a very, very heavy, dense, solid rubber ball. There's one that's in diameter, probably weighs 85 pounds or so. And then there's one, a couple on the farm that are probably, oh goodness, uh, three and a half feet in diameter and probably weigh several hundred pounds. So 
The big ones are super fun. The problem is you can probably tell from where you're sitting, but there's a, quite a bit of relief on the farm and they get one of those things rolling down a hill with the muskox power behind it and they'll run it right through a fence. So we have to monitor behavior. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a nice way to say we like to destroy yeah. things and test boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> um, just while we keep talking and answering questions, this is uh, Mama Jadeite and little Yord that we're looking at here. Um, just so you all know which little you're looking at. Um, I've got another question from Miriam. Um, do they just live out in the pastures here? Do they have barns to go into? A great question. One of the So going back all the way to the, the roots of this whole project, the idea was to come up with a geographically appropriate form of agriculture in the far north. And while we're well out of their normal range, um, being rather south southern part of the state, or at least south central part of the state, there's nothing that the weather here could throw at them. In fact, they're always, you know, more than equipped to take care of everything. So there is a barn in the background you might be able to see, and that's just a handling facility. We run them through there to weigh them. That's where all the combing of the kivy takes place. But pastures are where they are, uh, summer, winter, spring and fall. Um, the coldest days are nothing for these guys. If you know, we get into a stretch of 20, 25 below zero, that's pretty extreme for this area. In the Arctic, they could easily be 40, 50 degrees below zero with heavy, you know, high winds. So uh, there's nothing here that uh, we can't, that gets thrown at them that they can't handle. If anything, it just starts getting warm. And at that point, they just get real, real slow, real quiet. They'll just lay there and kind of work through the day. But it can be warm in the Arctic as well. <laughs> she wants a friend. I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm not oh, sure honey. if you can hear Yord's little little cries for her for her friends to come play with her. They aren't listening. <laughs> oh, a little fuzz butt. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jada just watching. Yeah, her ears, mom's just like, all right. Ears kind of going yeah. forward when she hears her watching her, make sure everything, oh, geez, okay. She just ran down to her friends. She's going to go take matters into her own hands. And Jada is going to make sure that near do well is. She's like, I guess I'll follow my cat. well. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll stop eating for one second. So I've got one. One more really great question, and I think we'll wrap it up. Um, this question is from Teresa. She says, so in the wild, when they circle around the babies for protection, then are those all females, or do the males help protect at all? Uh, when they get into their stance in the wild, they're, they are a family group. So you'll typically have a lead bull. You might have another younger bulls that have not been run off, but they will typically go shoulder to shoulder, put the calves on the inside, could also form a line against a predator and most typically you would probably see a bull who would then rush forward to take on whatever challenge whether it's a wolf or a bear or a human um, so all the animals that are are healthy and capable are going to be participating in that phalanx it's going to be guarding the calves and the older animals so it's a it's definitely a family effort a team effort and then uh, with a little extra help from a lead bull to, to Go beat someone up if they can. <laughs> Perfect. So I think we're going to wrap yeah. it up. Um, is there any last things that you two would like to say, Danny or Mark? No. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our first uh, live video of Virtual Mother's Day. Happy Mama's Day to all of our mommies out there. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys hopefully back here at... When is it? One o'clock. One o'clock. One o'clock. We'll, we'll, we'll do this again. One o'clock Alaska time and we'll see if um, anyone's a little bit more active. <laughs> well, happy right. Mother's Day to everyone. Enjoy your day and yeah, check back in, get your other moms on the phone and, and join us for the next one as well. Yes. Happy Mother's Day, everyone.